Splatoon 3 has a grand total of 15 specials, the most in the entire series, and whether you're a new or returning player, it might be a bit difficult to try to figure out which ones you should use and how to use them. So today I want to break down the basic roles and how to use every single special in the game. And if you enjoy this, consider subscribing as I'll have more tips for special weapons and other things Splatoon 3 related in the future. Let's get started. There are three different types of specials in Splatoon 3, Displacement, Aggressive, and Supportive. I'm going to go through each category, breaking down the specials in them. So let's start with the Displacement ones. Let's say you're a short range weapon trying to get in, and you see a charger on the top of Scorch Gorge. You want to get in and take that space, but you don't really want to be like that guy in the release date trailer and just walk straight into a charger laser. These specials are built to help you close that gap and move those pesky weapons out of the way. While some of these specials do have other utility, the prime reason to use any of these is usually just to move someone out of the way. It's what you do to start your push and allow you to walk into mid without just getting shot. There are four main specials in this category. First up being the Tena Missiles. This has the most range out of all the specials in the game, and it's the only one that can displace the entire team, even if they're split up across the stage. It also can allow you to see your opponents through walls, and you can move very fast after using them, which can be quite useful. The only real negative thing I can say about this special is it doesn't provide some of the paint output that some of the other displacement specials do. Which brings me to Triple Ink Strike. This special has the second highest amount of displacement in the game, being up to three targets if you can see them all where you throw them. It also comes with some of the highest painting capability of any of these specials. However, compared to missiles, it has a limited throwing range, and while you're launching the strikes, you can't use your squid form or your main weapon, so you're a bit more vulnerable. Still though, there's plenty of positives to make it worth it. Killer Will 5.1 provides the same global range that Tena Missiles does, but it can't lock onto every player on the other team, and you don't have as long a time to lock onto opponents, so you can't see them across the map as easily. You can still move up to three targets, though it's highly recommended you push in with this special active, as otherwise it won't do too much, and you can lock onto one or two targets most of the time for the increased damage. And finally is the Ink Storm. This one has the most limited range, but it does provide the most control over a single area and has solid paint output over a long period of time with the special's nice duration. This one's usually best if you plan to move people out of a spot but also want to stay there and fight, such as Ink Blot Middle if you're trying to recap zone. Alright though, maybe you don't really care about harming the enemy players, but instead you care about your teammates. First of all, thank you, but second of all, there's some good specials for you, support specials. While these provide some positive benefits to the user, the main goal of these is to give your team an advantage in a fight, usually through protection or buffing some of their stats. There are two main options for this. First up is Juice, aka the Tactic Cooler. These are buffs that can be given to your whole team if they're willing to go pick up a can. These provide better swim speed, run speed, intensify action, meaning you have better squid roll surge and jump RNG, quick super jump, quick respawn that activates even if you get kills, special saver, and ink resistance perks. While you can of course reap the benefits of this special for yourself, only taking one of the cans is a little selfish, so be sure to put this somewhere where the rest of your team can easily get it. Next up is the Ink Vacuum, which allows you to absorb enemy ink and use it to charge a powerful shot at the end, with the more ink you absorb, making the shot more powerful. Now, to get the most powerful shot, it's best to help protect a teammate that the enemies want to shoot. Not only does this keep them alive, allowing them to go for crazy plays, but it also means they're more likely to try to stop the Ink Vacuum, giving you more charge. This special is all about finding the right timing and person to pocket and enabling them in just the right moment to give yourself a nice playmaking power at the end. Now for the last and most common category, and come on, I know this is where the majority of you guys fall into, you just want to use your special to go make a cool play yourself and go kill the enemies. This is aggressive specials. These are usually the most selfish of the bunch and require the least amount of coordination, though they do still benefit from it and come from a variety of forms, first off being the Reef Slider. This is easily the most simple one. You get on a shark which has you a little bit vulnerable and then you just slide for it. It's perfect for forcing yourself into an area and the explosion could provide a good bit of cover and paint near your feet. You can also explode the slider early to catch people off guard. The crab tank can also provide a bit of protection with its ball form, though it is a bit slow and does have HP. It's not invincible. However, what this special provides is two alternate modes of fire. You have one standard fire that will ramp up in speed the longer you do it, and an alternate fire that allows you to have some explosions to hit people around corners. Do keep in mind though, compared to the other aggressive specials, this one's very slow and even turning in its standard fire will not move full speed. You're also vulnerable as you peek out on the top of it whenever you shoot. A special has a lot of ups and downs. Next up though is the Ultra Stamp. This provides the highest damage per second out of any special in the game, as swinging rapidly in front of you just does insane damage, which could be great for breaking other specials and the Rainmaker Shield. Additionally, you have a few modes of options here, as you could jump swing, rush forward normally, and finally throw the special at the end in order to try to snipe people at a distance, though do keep in mind that ends the special's duration. You don't exactly get it back. This special is still fairly vulnerable. The front 
doesn't protect you entirely, only a little bit, and the sides and back are fully exposed, though you do move pretty fast. Finally is the Trizuka. This long range special gives you three powerful shots that can match charger range. However, it's slow to paint its feet, wasting one of its three shots, and it's fairly vulnerable up close. The projectiles themselves are also a bit weird and take a bit to get used to, but the power and range with this special is unmatched. So it'd be cool if it could just be nice and neat and then I end the video with defined categories, but uh, that's not how this game works. You might have noticed there's a few specials I missed, and that's because they have hybrid roles. Let me talk about them here. There are a few specials that just by nature of how they work, fit into multiple categories, so I'll try to break them down and explain why they fit into each one, starting with the Booyah Bomb. Now, this special is pretty much a displacement one overall. You get a nice vantage point to see the opponents along throwing range, the explosion's a bit bigger than Tri-Strike and lingers a bit longer to force them out of the area a tad more, but it does give you HP, which is incredibly useful if you're in a 1v1. You can use it to position more aggressively, then stall with your HP while your teammates come to help you, or even in some situations, get off the Booyah Bomb to protect yourself. Again, most of the time, you're still using this as a displacement, but it does have some added versatility, which is really nice. It also technically charges your teammates' specials a little bit, but it also gives them away, and I don't want to put it into three rolls, and it's definitely not going to be your support special at all, so I'm not going to go into that. Bye. Next up, the Wave Breaker. While this one might seem like it's mostly about moving enemies, this is actually closer to a support special than a displacement one. The throwing range of where you deploy the thing is really limited, so it's more often going to be in places you actually want to fight. The location is really helpful for teammates to be able to pick off enemies, as well as the damage, and because you can jump over it, you can't really use this by itself to move an opponent like you can with other specials like this. On top of that, its HP is fairly limited, so even if you were to try to use this like a typical displacement special and just throw it at the enemy, they could probably just shoot it down before you do anything. You mainly want to use this in the middle of a fight to help secure control over an area and give information to your allies. Speaking of support hybrids, we got another one, and this one is pretty much dead even between aggressive and support, which is the Big Bubbler. This special's already been put on both very aggressive and supportive weapons, but the main reason this can work as an aggressive tool even though it seems like protection, is you can use this for yourself and still get a lot of value out of it, compared to the other supported specials on this list. For example, if you're a roller and are securing enemy terrain and want to hold it for a bit longer, you can use the big bubbler for yourself to stall and deny enemy positions or potentially give jumps to your teammates. That being said, the protection and, well, teammate jumping I mentioned previously means it does have good support application, so make sure you're not always using this for yourself and try to protect some of those teammates or hold key choke points. Finally is off-angle aggressive special specials with the Zipcaster and Inkjet. Now, of course, these are still primarily selfish, aggressive specials, but they provide entirely different utility to the normal ones, being that the angles and positions you can push are entirely different. For example, say you're on Turf War Scorch Gorge, but you don't want to have to push through the grades. Most other specials aren't able to do anything, but both of these can create entirely new approach options with how they work. And in some cases, you can even reach completely inaccessible areas to anything else in the game, such as that little graded roof circle, whatever this thing is in the same map. Inkjet is a bit better for higher up areas and pressuring people at a distance, while Zipcaster is usually better for getting up close to people. Though, hey, maybe they'll put this on some mid or long range weapon in the future and you'll be able to use it like a Widowmaker grappling hook and get even more utility. The movement options these specials provide should not be underestimated. They can be incredibly useful and worth looking at if you're trying to make a plan for a specific map. But with that being said, we've officially covered all 15 Splatoon 3 specials. Here's the complete chart if you want to look at the overview, and I hope this helped you out. If it did, consider subscribing because it helps me out a lot, and I'll see you guys in a future video.